Hi folks, Harry Frank from Ride Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you a transition called Warp from Ride Giant Universe. Now, I'll be honest with you here. We're not breaking any major new ground with this transition. This is a commonly used effect, and we've included our own spin on this effect as a part of Red Giant Universe 3.2. So let me show you how this works. I'll go to a cut point between two clips, and I'll apply Universe Warp. You can find this in your effects under your transitions in the folder RG Universe Transitions, and at the bottom, Warp. As I play through this, you'll see that it's a quick snap between two clips. And if I select the clip and go to the effect controls, we'll see that we have a few different transition types. Right now we're zooming backward. If I set this to zoom forward, we'll zoom into the first clip or the A clip, and the B clip will scale into place. And as you can see during the transition, there is some spinning, blurring, and if you look closely around the edges, some chromatic aberration and some distortion. Now, before we get into that other stuff, let me talk about the third transition type, which is slide. And this is pretty straightforward. Once you select slide, you can set this to be a right, left, up, or down transition. And if I play through this, you can see exactly what it's doing. It's doing some blurring and chromatic aberration as well but it's simply sliding from the A clip to the B clip rather than zooming. I'll set this back to zoom backward, which is the default setting. And let's talk about some of the other settings in here. I'll park this right here in the middle. And I'm gonna go down to the bottom and zero out these two blur values, radial and zoom blur. Below this slide direction, we have this lens distortion parameter. This is the same lens distortion you'll find in the popular universe plugin, Chromatic Aberration. And what it's doing is bending the edges of the clip. And it's doing this per channel. And each channel has a slightly different setting so that we end up with this chromatic aberration kind of effect. This lens distortion parameter is a master control for all three channels. And the channel controls are down here under red, green, and blue distortion. So if I start changing these, you'll see differences in the individual channels. Let me jump to a different clip here just to mix things up. I'll select this clip and we'll talk about the scale. I'm gonna skip over clip A and clip B position for now. Scale and rotation are the transformation values that happen during the transition. So in the case of the zoom forward transition, this scale is what that A clip is scaling to. If I set this to zoom backward, it is what the B clip scales from as it fades in. The rotation is the distance traveled during the transition. So a setting of negative 45 means it'll move in the clockwise direction one eighth of a turn. So 360 being a full spin, 45 degrees would be one eighth of that. If I were to set this to positive 180, this would do a half revolution during the transition. Now, this animation curve, I think it works pretty well with an exponential curve, but essentially this is a very high tension curve. It moves very slowly at the beginning. In the middle, it moves very fast, and then as it settles, it slows way down as well. Now, that description could be said about many of these, such as ease in out sine, ease in out quintic, and ease in out quartic, etc. It's just that how extreme that tension is, how slow it moves at the beginning, how quick it moves in the middle, and how slow it moves at the end is just more extreme as you move down this list. So if I set this to something like ease in out quad, it will still have a little bit of that tension, but as you can see, it doesn't really have that flow that it did before. So I generally leave this at ease in out exponential, but there's a bunch of other curves there for you if you'd like. For more information, see the warp documentation, which includes a link to a page that we have that explains all about these animation curves. Now, I think it's worth talking about the blur functions at this point, because you might notice there's nothing in here that actually says motion blur. Now, I won't bore you with all of the details, but 
this was tested thoroughly using a true motion blur. And Universe processes everything on the GPU, and generally GPU is very, very fast. Motion blur is a bit of a special case because for every frame rendered in motion blur, if it has a resolution of, let's say, eight, it's looking forward and backward four frames to figure out where the clip is moving and how to blur it across all of those frames. And that is a very expensive thing to render. And in testing, it was found that motion blur just brought the speed of this plugin to its knees. Notice I haven't rendered this yet. And generally, as I play through this, even at full resolution here in Premiere with some HD clips, it pretty much plays in real time. And it's doing that because instead of using true motion blur, we're actually using some effects that mimic the effect of motion blur. So we're using a radial blur or sort of a spin blur and a zoom blur. And these are tied to the animation curve. So as it moves faster, the blurring happens more. And as it settles into a stop, there is less of that blurring. So you can adjust this overall zoom or radial blur to smooth things out. And it really does help with the fluidity of this transition. Next, let's go back and talk about these clip A and clip B position parameters. Clip A position is the position that the first clip or the A clip will move to during the transition. And the clip B position is where the clip B will start. So both of these have to move from their center point, or in the case of the B clip, move to their center point. Otherwise, we'll have a jump in the transition. Now, where this is useful is when you'd like to fly into a specific spot in the frame. So for this one, if I set this to zoom forward, let's say we want to fly kind of right into that sunset. And you'll notice that it's framed a little bit off center. So if I kind of push myself a little bit into the transition, I can go to the clip A position and shift this X position. Now, this position is actually working post scale here. So you'll notice if I've doubled this, we've got some pretty high values here. And this is because I need to move it the number of pixels after it's actually been scaled. So now if I hit play, we'll see that it flies a lot more into where that sunset is. In fact, it looks like I overshoot it a little bit. Let's set this to maybe 2100. Lastly, we have a dissolve start and end. This is just one of those things that is there for fine tuning. Rather than lock these values in, these values are exposed for you to fine tune if you need to. So what's happening here when we do any sort of zoom, either zoom forward or zoom backward, it is cross dissolving between the clips. And the way it does this right now is by starting the dissolve from the A clip 25% into the transition, and then it finishes that dissolve 75% through the transition. So in this case, it would be a few frames in, it starts to dissolve from A to B, and then right about here, 75% through, it would finish dissolving to the B clip. So if you wanted this to just be one continuous dissolve between the clips, you could set this to zero and 100. If you wanted it to be a much shorter transition, so let's say you wanted it to hold on A clip a lot longer and get to the B clip a lot quicker, you could do something like that. So 40 and 60. So you can see that we're holding on that A clip and then does a quick cross dissolve in the middle and then gets us to the B clip. The last parameter that I haven't spoken of is the slide blur. And that is exactly the same as the radial blur and zoom blur. It is active when you're using the slide blur. So as it slides from one clip to the other, we have a control here to turn up the overall slide blur. It's essentially a directional blur in the direction of the move. That's all about Universe Warp. I encourage you to play with the settings and come up with some creative uses of this. If you like some starting points with transitions, you can click on the Choose a Preset button and choose from many of the presets that you've got right here. So that is Warp from Red Giant Universe 3.2. My name is Harry Frank. We'll see you in the next tutorial.